Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to run through some additional scenarios using offset tracking to show what you can do with this capability. So this particular shot it has a bunch of occlusions due not only to the bars on the windows, but also to the people walking by. So perhaps we want to add some other plane onto the tarmac out there. So we want to start out, we're just going to Pretend we're doing some supervised tracking in the midst of the whole thing here. So we're going to add a tracker onto this plane in the back. And obviously we need to have a variety of different trackers to do this. So we're just going to zoom in on this guy a bit. And now we're ready to start tracking him through the shot. As you do that, I'm just using the middle mouse wheel here. And as you do that, you see that we, we do get into some spots where the vertical sizing needs to be increased a bit. And one of the things also that, that let's do, normally I would put the graph editor on the bottom, you know, with this camera and graph view. In this particular situation, we've got you know, a limited capture window here just so that we can be able to upload and play this back for everybody. So we're just going to create our own little view with the graph editor on the side. So, you know, we are starting to animate up the, the search size. So uh, you see the little key there that's just a non-position key. So we'll just continue using our mouse wheel to zoom through the shot. And here comes all of a sudden a head going right in front. So what we want to do is find an additional feature to track while our primary feature is being occluded by the foreground object. Now, the two things that we want to do is, first off, we want to pick something that's roughly at the same distance and position in the image as our primary feature here. The other criteria, really, is that we want to have both of the features visible right at the beginning and also right at the end of the occlusion. So, a spot that meets those criteria maybe as this lettering on the side of the plane there. So we'll use that as our position to track while our primary location is being included. So we're going to turn on the offset channel to indicate that we want to start doing offset tracking. And you see we've picked up a few extra little markers there and we'll see what's going on a little bit more in a second and here's the key thing that I'm going to do I'm going to hold down the shift key and then I'm going to start dragging I can drag either in the camera view or in the mini tracker view and as I do that you'll see that in the graph editor where, and in the control panel we're animating values for the offset channels that are being added to the tracker location that's being tracked in such a way that we get back exactly to the location that we really want to be tracking. So we've done two things. We've, we've moved the tracker, the visible tracker if you like, to our new feature that we want to track. And we've also created keys on the offset, tra offset channels that exactly take the final tracker location back to our original spot. And having done that, now we can start tracking through the shot. And Synthize continues to update the location of the visual feature. And to that gets added the, the offset that we've set up. Now, here are 
original feature has reappeared. So we're re ready to turn the offset channel back off. We don't need it anymore. But before we do that, we want to go over into the camera view and just reposition that offset marker back to our original location, to the desired location that we're going to want to be tracking. And that's an important step because it's updating our offset channel keys. It's creating new offset channel keys so that in the middle part of the shot, synth eyes will be interpolating those offset channels so that it, the final location stays as accurately as possible in the spot that we want even though it can't really be seen because of the foreground object. But the idea is to be as accurate as possible all throughout that intervening interval. So adjusting that final offset value is an important part of that process. And depending on how much camera motion there is, how much perspective shift, the adjustment you know, might be substantial. And once we've done that, now we can go and turn off the offset. And you'll see that the synthize has created new keys that bring the pattern that we're visually tracking back to the location that we want to track. So now we can continue on tracking it. And it's as if you know we're, we're not using the offsets at all. So we'll just scrub back through so you can see. Even in the intervening part, we still have that crosshair sitting there in the right location, you know, even though the shot's bouncing around a bit and whatever. And one other thing to notice, in the middle of the offset part, the mini tracker view here is showing, you know, the visible feature that is being tracked. But if we go and lock the cam the lock that tracker, market is done. Now it does go and it just stays and it's always showing that final location. So the behavior of what you see in the mini tracker view and the simul track window for that matter uh, varies depending on whether the tracker is locked or not. But we're going to unlock it and go have some more fun with this tracker. So now here comes our second person walking by and if we scrub through the shot we'll see by the end of the shot or the end of that occluding portion he's blocking the feature that we had tracked in the first occlusion so it's not really going to let us do the same thing using this same original location so I just show if we turn the offset track back on, the same offset value from before is being used, and that brings the reference pattern down to here. And we could hold down the shift key again and move this guy around a little and, and tune that up. And that would be fine right up until the end when we're the thing is still going to be blocked and this pattern is not going to be visible. So instead what we'll do is just go and again I'm going to hold the shift key and let's just go to a different location. So here's a different location that we can track that will still be visible at the end of the occlusion. So here our pattern has reappeared over here. This guy is still visible that we're tracking. So now we can do our final little adjustment of the position of this guy. And then we'll turn the offset channel back off and it hops back to our original location. And now we can keep on tracking through the shot. So now we, we've gotten through both of those two occlusions using two different alternate features to track while the feature is being occluded. And 
as far as the solver is concerned, all it's going to be looking at is that final location that's nice and smooth even while the people are walking by. And that's really terrific, especially when you have only a limited number of features that are trackable in the first place, especially with object tracking when there may not be that many features. So this lets you keep everything trackable even if things temporarily get occluded. Now, of course, we started tracking here in the middle of the shot. All this stuff can be done in reverse as well. I'm going to show you what happens. We can go and just change the direction on this tracker and prepare for tracking in reverse. I'm just using the right click to, or right drag to adjust the spacing there. So I'm going to change the direction of the tracker. And if you watch over here in the graph editor uh, track view, you'll see that there are a bunch of additional keys that are created. And those are necessary to make sure that everything remains the same. If you're going to go to the end and now play through, you want to still get the same results track in the, in the other direction. And that actually takes a bunch of different uh, keys to, to make sure that everything works in reverse. So now, let me start seeing there actually is a bunch of bumpiness there. So let's just juice up that third size again. And now we come up to another spot where the pattern becomes occluded. So let's just uh, pick one other feature for starters. We're going to turn our offset channel on. Again, it drops back to that previous feature. And we'll just shift drag a little to fine tune that. Now, just to be interesting, just for illustration, Let's consider what happens if life is really tough and there isn't a single feature available to track throughout the time that it, our primary feature is blocked. So I've been using this feature here, but suppose now this one gets blocked and something else becomes visible that I need to use instead. So what can I do about that? Well, the old answer was a bit complicated. So I've switched to a later version of Synthize that does the work for you. So here we can just hold down Shift and drag up to our new position again. And this version of Synthize now goes and adjusts the offset tracks directly to make this work right. And it turns out it has to add some extra keys so that there's basically a jump cut at this frame in the offset channels. And basically, if you're doing a jump cut in the position of the pattern that you're tracking, you need to have a jump cut in the position of the offsets as well. But Synthize does that for you, and now you can keep on tracking using that new location. And you can go and repeat that as many times as you need. And again, if you watch the graph editor views, you'll see this staircase effect as Synthize adjusts the offsets for you. And you can work through the shot this way, jumping among as many different reference locations as you need for your shot. So hopefully this tutorial has given you a bunch of ideas about how to use the offset tracking capabilities in your own supervised tracking shots. It is a very handy capability for more difficult supervised tracking. So enjoy.